Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a new update, a massive one. This is version 0 0.27. Did a lot of improvements. I think the first thing you notice is the UI. That has changed a little bit. Most of the elements have popped and made it a little bit more clearer to look for, especially the controls at the top. And also have a left hand bar, uh, top left where it says editing. So that basically specifies your mode. So you can do F1 for editing, F2 for activation, F3 for grouping, which is a new feature we'll talk about. And then F10 is simulation. Uh, so you don't use the tab anymore. Tab is used to hide the UI. Like if you think this is this UI or this HF display is too busy, you just hit tab and you'll go away for all you pros. Uh, the other thing that you notice is the two images on the left and right for beginners. So if you look at the one on the left, it shows you the keys, the corresponding keys to control the pitch, yaw, and roll on the prop. So for instance, if I drop an, an F6 shot target like this, and if I want to roll it, I do Q and E to roll it around, Z and C to, to tilt it, and then F and R to pitch it, and then T and G to raise and lower it. You can lower it into the ground if you want, like that. All right, and then the, um, the image on the left shows you that you move your mouse to, to move your direction, WASD for your personal movement. And if you want to delete anything, you want to delete an object or activate a line, you can just hit delete. So if you hit the delete button, it will go away. If, if you hit the cancel button, it will just cancel your move. So for instance, if I drop a target and I'm in the midst of moving this and I don't want to move it, I, I want it to revert back to normal and cancel it, I'll just hit right click. Right. So tap will show the UI. I also have a convenient uh, helper in the bottom right. It says not saved. So if you make any changes in your stage design and you haven't saved it, it reminds you. And also when you try to quit, it will also tell you you have unsaved work and if you you should uh, remind you to save it or you can just exit anyway. This update has a massive overhaul for the UI. So if you notice this front H, the HUD heads up display has, has changed. I've also changed a few things like for instance if you go into change bay you see that now it will tell you which bay is selected. So if I switch to the green one and then if I go back to change bay again I know that the green one is selected. Right? I mean it's, it's the simple one, right? Also, same thing for the sky, so massive improvements here. I've also switched out the X button they used to close the window to cancel the, the function and replaced it with a cancel button instead, which makes more sense actually since this is more like a, it acts more like a dialog box than a screen. So for instance, if I go to take photo here, I've also highlighted the things that you've selected. If you don't want it, you just hit cancel. To go to change sky, you can hit done or cancel and then I uh, can do change settings. I've moved the uh, sky rotation feature over to the sky section, right? So those are some of the interesting UI changes I've made. The other two big features, first one is grouping. As some of you have mentioned to me that if, if you create custom targets, so for instance, if I drop this uh, target down and I don't want to put a hot cover in there, let's say a bottom hot cover, I don't want to cover the bottom part of it, right? And when you do that, and then when you try to move the, the target, it doesn't move with the hard cover, right? And so some of you have requested that we do grouping. So grouping is now a new mode. If you hit F3, you go into grouping mode, which is blue. And what you do here is just like activation. You find an object that you want to be the master, and you click on that, and then that you know, we highlight that in blue. And then you have the same line where you can connect to another object and group them together. So in this case, I want to group it with this hard cover. So I click on that and next thing you know is the whole object is now blue. So if I switch back to editing mode, when I click on this, all of it moves together. And you know an object is grouped because it's, its highlight around it is blue in color instead of yellow. So if I drop a normal target here and this is not grouped, this is yellow, an item that's grouped is in blue. And if you want to remove it, very simple, go over to grouping, click on that and then just hit delete and you delete the grouping. So now if I go back to editing, you see that this is now yellow. And both of them are yellow. They're not grouped anymore. So that's a cool grouping feature. Uh, although grouping has its limitations at this point, it won't work with moving props. So for instance, if I drop a swinger here and I try to group it with something else, it's weird. It just doesn't really work. So if I put it down here, 
And because the, the reason is because this model I use here is a static model that it doesn't move. But when you go over to simulation mode, okay, let me try and show you grouping. So I'm going to group this swinger with this target. Hang on. Okay, so now they're grouped, right? Oh, hang on, there we go, they're grouped. So if I switch over to simulation mode, you see that it's not, it doesn't work, it doesn't stick to the target anymore. And the reason is because this model is a physically based model, where it has full, full actual physics. So um, I'll take some time to figure out how to, to resolve that. But for now, don't use grouping with props that move. The next big feature is written stage briefings. And I think one of the usefulness of these tools is being able to generate written stage briefings or stage design templates, if you like, based on what you've designed. So let's say if I go over here and I load an existing stage. So once the stage has loaded, then you can go over to the menu and go to stage briefing. And this is a new UI where you can specify the procedures, the, you can rename your stage name, you can rename your name. Um, the stage stats are automatically generated by the system. It detected there are six metric targets, six paper metric targets. You can obviously force it to change if you want, but it automatically detects. You can specify how many hits per. Uh, it shows you how many points, it shows you how many steel targets, how many no-shoots. The approximate dimensions feature isn't working right now. I will hopefully get to that. It also allows you to set what kind of scoring type, whether it's fixed time or Virginia or Comstock, and then it also automatically detects whether it's a short, medium, or long course. But obviously, when you design stages, these are a bunch of the different types of course types you can select. Points and round counts are also automatically calculated. So for instance, if I switch this to three hits per paper target, you see that the points have increased to 165 because there are 33 rounds, right? And here you can type your start position, you can type it in. I have pre-populated this with basic stuff, like this is the most open start position. And this is the most simple procedure. Uh, you can obviously type and add stuff here. Please mind the uh, activation wires. I know it's not really a procedure, but I'm just showing you that you can just add stuff here and type in as you wish, right? I also built a generate brief button the tool will automatically generate a stage briefing based on what you have here what, what it thinks would be an appropriate brief so for instance if i hit generate brief it will come up with something like welcome to stage test the aid my name is something i'm the CRRO for the stage is an eight, uh, 33 round 165 com stop long course there are six metric targets and 15 steel targets best three hits per cardboard target will score as you can see, it took all this data over here to generate the stage briefing. So you were asking me, why do we have two different types of stage briefing? Why is there a start position and procedure over here? And why do we have a stage briefing over here? Well, the USPSA's NROI organization has now advised all stage designers and ROs that the best way to create stage design or written stage briefing is being very explicit at what your, your brief is. Basically, you although you have this, which is basically the old style of doing things, you also have a brand new section that basically is more verbose, so it allows the RO to read it out during the match as intended. And so if you want to look at a template and if you want to print it, you can just click on view. You see that now we have two different types of templates, say USBSA and IPSC. You see this is automatically generated. This is how most of the matches in the US uh, look like now. We have uh, one page here that shows the diagram and the simple instructions and the scoring and the round count. And then an actual written stage briefing that will be read out by the ROs or the CRO, whoever is running the stage. And then for the IPSC ones who want to build one, I couldn't find a really good template online, so I just decided to create something myself. I think taking inspiration from some of the old IPSC stage, stage templates, stage designs. Thanks to Jason from Australia who sent me a couple of templates to, for me to take a look at. And yeah, so this is it for now. I mean, hopefully in the future, I will allow you to customize your logos, maybe the layouts and stuff like that uh, as we go through this. Then what you can do is if you want to export the USPSA version, you just click on export. Just specify where you want to, where you want to save this file and you save it. So once the PDF is saved, you can go to wherever you saved it double click it and you open up and you'll look like two page PDF in this in this instance or if you pick the IPSC one it'll just be a single page uh, diagram and you can print this out and use this for your matches so yeah that's it 
those are the new updates i uh, hope you like them please again give me feedback how we can improve or if there's anything missing or are there any problems or issues with the tool you can pick up the latest version at the same dropbox folder that i've sent to most of you early testers and looking forward for you guys to play with it